What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode But before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic Which is very important and the player ratings and potentials may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you During the season you don't have to follow all the tips This is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players You could sign for a certain club this is mainly aimed at those who are out there who may be new to the game and just want some help or for those who are out there who may just be stuck for ideas on what players to sign for a certain team in career mode. So in today's episode of Who to Sign For guys, we are going to take a look at the Premier League's newest team. Yes, Huddersfield are set to grace England's top flight after winning the Championship Playoff Final in penalties in yesterday afternoon's fixture at Wembley against Reading. I thought Huddersfield would be a pretty fun team to use because of that. I know lots of you guys will be trying out Huddersfield next year in FIFA 18 for career mode uh, but one thing to say just before we get on is that this who to sign for episode is done with Huddersfield in the championship I know a lot of you guys will be putting Huddersfield in the Premier League if you want to do a Huddersfield career mode in FIFA 17 uh, and if you are going to put it in the Premier League it's very easy to swap the teams around I'm sure you know how to do it but if you don't so I want to help you out in the comment section down below um, and their objectives are of course a little bit different and they are just to stay in the Premier League avoid relegation and what they are in the championship which is to reach the round of 32 stage in the FA Cup you might also wonder whether they get a bigger budget or not. The answer is no. They do have a slightly bigger wage budget, but the budget for the most part is very identical to the budget they'd have in the championship. So there you go. Uh, if you, again, if you want to put in the Premier League, that's totally fine. You can swap out all the free relegated teams and put in the free promoted size in the championship if you'd so wish. But this episode is done with Huddersfield in the championship. And my personal recommendation is that you should try and get them promoted yourself in the first season to the Premier League from the championship. So Huddersfield then, uh, I thought it'd be a fun fun team to use to do the time for because uh, again I know a lot of you guys will be trying them out for a career mode next year and probably over the summer uh, in this career mode as well in this year's FIFA. Uh, their objectives in the first season are to finish in mid-table in the championship and also reach the round of 32 stage in the FA Cup. They are a three and a half star team with a 2.8 million pound budget and the squad is all right. Now the one thing I'll say is this it's not really Premier League quality to begin with and with a 2.8 million pound budget it's going to be very, very difficult indeed to make this team Premier League quality with such a small amount of resources available to you. As for the players in their squad, again, it's a three and a half star team. There's a couple of players that are most likely to retire at the end of the first season. That is Whitehead and oh, I think it's a centre back as well. That's due to retire at the end of the first season. And uh, there's, there's some decent players in there. The standout, of course, is Moy, the Australian boy uh, current, currently on loan from uh, Manchester City right now. There's some decent players in there. A couple of decent players good potential as well, uh, such as Palmer, a uh, young Cam. Uh, he's pretty decent. Uh, but it's it's a side which, again, it lacks real Premier League quality. So if you are going to put them in the Premier League, be warned, it will be very tough to keep them up in the first season with a very low budget. Uh, there are three players currently loaned out. I wouldn't recommend recording any of them. And there are four players in their deals that come at the end of the year. I wouldn't recommend giving a contract to any of those guys either. So let them all go come the end of the season. But as for new signings with Huddersfield Town, that's why it comes to these videos. What signings would I recommend? for a Huddersfield Town career mode at the Kirkley Stadium. Well, with £2.8 million pounds at your disposal, you can't really splash the cash and sign some really world-class players. You need to build up young talents and sign them to the Huddersfield team, and you need to get true value for money. And this is the first signing I would recommend. Axel Tuanzebe, the Manchester United centre-back, valued at £1.5 million, pounds, 69 rated at just 18 years old. You can get him for around his valuation, and certainly this is a guy that I would say is is recommended for a Huddersfield career mode. He may start 69 overall. That may be good enough to go in your first 11, but not much better than your current choices. However, he does have 83 potential, grows 14 ratings, and he also wants a wage decrease as well. And I love it when players want that. He goes down from 21 grand a week to 20 grand a week. He just wants first team football. He's not in it for the money. So uh, yeah, Axel Tuanzebe is the first player I recommend to sign. And again, as a young, talented defender to slot right into your first 11, he is certainly one player I recommend. And he's it would be a bit like Michael Keane, really. Michael Keane was sold uh, by Van Hal to Burnley for £2 million a few years ago now. And now, of course, we all know how good Keane is. He's, he's worth a lot more than £2 million, let's just say that. To Anzabi could be the same sort of player for you. You pick him up for a, a very low transfer fee at just £1.5 million, but he grows and grows and grows, gets better and better and better. And in a few years' time, you can sell him for a lot more than that and make a, a healthy profit on the guy. Or keep him as your first choice centre-back, up to you. But uh, to Anzabi, definitely the first sign I recommend. And with £1.5 million being spent, 
spent on the youngster. After that, you've not got much money left over. And that's why with Huddersfield Town, as I sell some Deadwood players here, this is definitely a career mode which I would recommend for the more experienced players out there. This is a road to glory career mode, no doubt about it. But it's one where you're going to be challenged, especially when it comes down to the financial side of things. The budget is very, very small. And with a three and a half star team in a competitive division like the championship, you are probably not going to stroll to the Premier League with ease in your first season. This will be a very tough project, but certainly a fun one, particularly for the more experienced players out there. But as for new signings with Huddersfield, after the signing of Tawanza Bay, we went in for another new signing here, despite spending the bulk of our budget on the young English defender. I went in for this guy, Javi Ontiveros, the Malaga left midfielder, like Tawanza Bay, 18 years old, valued at £1.9 million, 70 rated. And as you can see, I put in a valuation bid, which just like with Axel Tawanza Bay, was accepted right off the bat. I say it all the time, and I'll say it again, valuation bids are always worth doing, especially with these type of players here, because there's a good chance they won't come off, but with fringe players like Tuanza B and Ontiveros, and players who aren't really regarded as uh, too highly rated by the clubs they currently play for in the game, they're, they're always, they're, there's always a possibility. There's always a possibility, and when there's a possibility, you may as well do it just in case. We had the Ontiveros bid accepted, just like with Tuanza B, a valuation bid of £1.9 million, and thank goodness as well, because we have basically no money left after that, and as you can see, he rejected our first contract, didn't want to relocate from uh, Malaga to uh, Yorkshire, not really surprised, but uh, eventually the second time of asking after a, a bonus uh, goal percentage of 10, no, a goal bonus percentage of 10%, uh, he decided to accept the contract and joined Tawanza Bay here at the Kirkley Stadium. So another sign that I recommend, uh, the one problem with Ontivero is though, as you might notice it now in his stats, is that physically he's quick, he's got really high balance at 88, some very nice technical stats too at just 18 years old. Old, but he's got laughably low stamina at 34, which means that he's going to be absolutely shattered in the championship when you're playing 46 games a season. It's safe to say this guy will not make the midweek fixtures. There's no doubt about it. He'll fail those fitness tests every single time. You need to train his stamina up right from the beginning because his stamina is so, so low. And in FIFA, particularly over the past two years as well, stamina and fatigue affects your players a lot more than ever before. So that's the one recommendation. If you do sign on to Veros, I'd recommend it. He's got 83 potential, a very good young wide midfielder but definitely make sure the second he arrives through the door you put him in the training drills and you train his stamina up ASAP to at least a very acceptable level of around 50 come the end of the first season plus but uh, still for new signs with Huddersfield uh, once we had signed on to Veros we were basically done I sold Sean Scannell just for a little bit more cash now Scannell's a pretty decent player 69 rated 4 star skills very quick as well but there's some decent wide midfielders here already on to Veros signed as well so I thought Scannell was the one we could probably afford to get rid of I sold him for just under his valuation and decides going for a new third choice striker as they only had two listed strikers in their team now after I sold a couple earlier on in this episode. I put in three bids, uh, one for Dylan Vente, Connor Chaplin of Portsmouth who I'd recommend out of the three and also uh, Cedric Tuchert as well from Nuremberg who has the most potential. Uh, sadly Portsmouth and Nuremberg rejected those bids but we did see final accept our valuation bid for Dylan Vente. Again this is why you put those valuation bids in because like with Portsmouth and Nuremberg they may reject it but final accepted a bit for Vente. We gave him a contract. He came in and Dylan Vente signed was our third signing. 17 years old, 62 rated. You might think, what's the point in that? He's not really going to be good enough to go into the first 11 in the first season, but he's got 81 potential, a four-star weak foot, high medium work rate. He's a player to develop for the future. And again, with Huddersfield with a small budget, you can't really sign too many first-team quality players in the first season. It's all about bringing in younger players who may not be good enough straight away, but over the years, you'll develop them and you'll turn them into future beasts. So Vente, the third sign we made for his valuation, 81 potential, and that's a whopping 9, is it 19 growth? How bad is my maths? 19 growth? I don't know. I think it is. But uh, still, a player of high growth anyway, and uh, certainly worth his signature. But uh, the final signing I looked to make was this guy right here. If I would have signed Chaplin or Tuchur, I wouldn't have the money for this guy. But after signing Vente, there's a little bit more money left in our kitty. So I went after Miles Villard, a player that I've signed more than any other in this series. Uh, the Anderlet goal Goalkeeper. If you're watching the series, you know all, all, all about who he is now. The Andalette goalkeeper uh, is a 16-year-old, 63-rated shot stopper, valued at £475,000, only 16 years old, and he grows 20 ratings as well. Gets from 63 to his potential, his peak, which is 83. A very handy goalkeeper to have, especially because Danny Ward, Huddersfield's current number one, 
who uh, obviously performed the heroics in uh, both the semi-final against Sheffield Wednesday and in the final uh, against Reading as well in a penalty shootout. He's currently on loan from Liverpool and not actually a permanent Huddersfield player. So you'll want a future number one and an understudy in the first season. Svila or Bailo would be my two recommendations for that future number one. Svila has more potential 83. Bailo's got 81 potential, but does have the GK long throw trait, which is really useful for starting counter-attacks. But eventually we got a bit accepted from Anderlecht the third time of asking on deadline day. Was it the fourth time? Fourth time of asking on deadline day uh, for £700,000, uh, which is about just about how much we had left in our kitty. And uh, we signed the Belgian who turned 17 in the game uh, for 700 grand, which is quite a bit of money. It's 225 grand over his valuation. Out of Huddersfield, you need to get good value for money. But this is a goalkeeper I would recommend for literally any team in career mode, whether it's a, a five-star team or a three-and-a-half star team or lower than that. This guy grows 20 ratings. And where he's going to be your first choice number one or not in the first season, irrelevant. When he's got that high potential, when he's got that high growth, you've got to make sure you sign him, even as a backup goalkeeper. So Svila will become your second choice goalkeeper, understudy to Danny Ward, but your future number one at the Kirkley Stadium. Very decent stats already at just 16 years old, six foot two, and certainly a goalkeeper I would recommend to bring to Huddersfield Town. So in the end, we spent four and a half million pounds on four new players, raised 1.3 million pounds for selling some Deadwood players, but of course most of that was raised through the sale of Sean Scannell. And I must say, I didn't really improve the team that much, but the one thing I did do was make it younger and add in more potential. Out of Huddersfield with a £2.8 million budget, I think really that's the best you can do. So I thought I did a pretty decent job, to be honest. Maybe you guys disagree, but I thought I did okay. And uh, again, it, it, the, the team, I should, you know, I should, you know, clarify the team. The team wasn't really improved that much. That is true. In fact, it was hardly improved at all, to be honest. If so, then marginally so. But uh, again, you're building for the future of the Huddersfield team. You may as well bring in those young talents. And again, you've got to get good value for money. And I'd say all four of those transfers certainly represent that. But uh, still, as per usual, we'd simulate to the end of the season, see how Huddersfield will get on. Their objectives in the first season were to reach around the 32 stage in the Cup and also finish in mid-table in the Championship. Well, actually, they finished in fifth place in the Championship, once again, reaching the playoffs, just like in real life, finished one point and one place ahead of Aston Villa. And in the FA Cup, this was just as impressive. They reached the quarter-final stages before being knocked out by the eventual winners, Arsenal, who beat Chelsea by the same scoreline in the final 2-1, which I thought was really, really fitting. But uh, sadly, in the Championship playoffs, they didn't reach the final and game promotion to the Premier League. They were knocked out by Nottingham Forest over two legs by four goals to two, who they themselves reached the Premier League after winning the final. So, Championship playoff semi-finals, not a place at Wembley in the game like in real life. However, it is worth noting once again that they weren't expected to reach the playoffs in the first season in the game. They were just supposed to finish in mid-table. So in the end, I exceeded both the cup and the league objective, despite not having any, let's just say, real success uh, in the first season in the game. But it was always going to be tough. And uh, again, the, the one thing I would say, like a closing statement with this team, is that I know that tons of you guys will want to do a Huddersfield Town career mode in FIFA 18. I'll certainly be considering it myself. But if you do want to do it in FIFA 17, please do keep in mind, with a low budget, this is going to be very, very tough for you to do too well in the first season. This is a tough, tough career mode to do. And that is why, like I said, at the start of the episode, I would recommend this team mainly for the more experienced players out there. But this would certainly still be a fun career mode though. A very tough RTG, a financially restricted RTG, and a real team for you to test your ability and see how you can do in the game at the Kirkley Stadium. That will end today's episode of Who to Sign For, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did appreciate the tips, then please do leave a like as well. Uh, once again, uh, certainly a team to recommend. I, I really think this will be a really, really fun project to do. Certainly a hard, difficult RTG, but a fun one nonetheless. And uh, if you do put them in the Premier League, uh, do let me know how you get on in the first season as well. I'll be interested to see how many of you guys can keep them up in the first season and do quite well. Hopefully your tips helped though. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please do leave a like. Congratulations, Tidefield Town. Can't wait to see them in the Premier League next season. Much love to you all. Have a great evening. And I'll see you for the next episode of Who To Sign For very soon. Bye.